right. So if we could start uh, from what happened earlier this year, you know, lineup changes are not nothing new to bands, but uh, there's bound to be always some effect on the band. So uh, what kind of effect did the pretty drastic lineup changes have on Black Foxes? Um, so basically, I think it's quite common with bands that have been going for six, seven years. You know, it's like a family, like anything. It's just, you can't always be on the same wavelength. And I feel like the other guys sort of reached a point that they just wanted to, wanted to call it there and totally respect their decision to do that. But I wasn't done with the band at that stage. Um, so I had to go through quite a process of label management, all the industry sort of shit to, to get the third record over the line. And that was the biggest difficulty. Um, and I was living in Bristol at the time and I had so many options for amazing musicians. And in the end, I decided to go with my longest um, and closest best friends from where I grew up as a kid uh, as the bassist. And then a guy that we sort of headhunted as a drummer. Um, but none of it, I, I wouldn't have done any, with, any of it unless it felt right. So the moment we sort of went into the room, it just felt totally right. And it was a... Uh, the rest is sort of history. It was it was so exciting to to sort of have a fresh start with it all. To be honest, yeah. Has there has it already affected? Has an effect on the band's sound or or the new upcoming album? Yeah, massively. I feel like uh, personally, songwriting wise, I was sort of in a corner with how it was previously. I I, I just felt like I'd done as much as I could. I, I just, I couldn't really take it any further. I was getting uninspi uninspired. Um, so the new guys really brought a, this sort of fresh sense of life and purpose. And the exciting thing of, I think about the band now is that we just, we're writing for ourselves. You know, we just wanna, there's no limitations at all. And, and it's gonna piss some people off. It's gonna be exciting to other people. And that's the whole, that's the whole purpose of the band. I think uh, it's, it's, it's all about the music and already we're writing for the fourth record and a lot of it's spoken word and weird. And I think the sort of no limitations is really important. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I read somewhere also, no rules, no labels, all on the line. But uh, what kind of album as a whole are we talking about with the new one? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I kind of just summed it up, but I feel like we wrote the record for ourselves. So there's no, you know, we pulled no punches. We, we didn't sacrifice anything for anyone. And it, it's all about the three of us. Now. It's all about what we do and we didn't ask it in the way of our decision making. And I think that was really, really important. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's quite. I think it's quite hard after six, seven years being in a band. You find yourself falling into slippery slopes of trying to appease people, trying to make people happy. Um, so it was really important with this record to just do what made us happy. So there is going to be a lot on the record. You know, the, the last song on the record is ten and a half minutes long. That is not going to be for everyone, um, but it's for us. And I feel like the people that are going to get it are going to be sort of connected to the band for life. So that's really important. Okay. And can you name some like sources of inspiration? Like where did this album come from? Uh, for the new record? Oof, um, uh, I mean, a lot of old school stuff, to be honest. Like one of my favorite guitarists is a guy called Rory Gallagher. Um, but Beck was a big one for this record. Um, Radiohead obviously are always pioneers and so in innovative with their sounds. That was really big. But to be honest, I, I, I genuinely don't think it sounds like anything else in the rock world right now as a collective of songs. Um, obviously there's hints and nods to different things, but I, I don't really know many other rock bands right now at our stage in a career that are doing stuff like that. And to be honest, we were just a bit fucking bored of the rest of the world putting out the same song 
10 times on a record. So we decided to just make everything really different and versatile. So I think it sounds like us. Okay, and uh, well, how is it to put out new music and an important album at that at uh, times like this? Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not obviously not ideal, but we're really fortunate with the fact that we managed to record it in January just before stuff kicked off. So had we waited a few months, we wouldn't have had a third record. There's no way with the, the way the industry is now, there's no way we would have got that over the line. So we're really fortunate that we've been given the opportunity to showcase this music, but at the same time, not being able to tour and stuff is just it's just really fucking weird because that's all I've done my entire life. Um, I don't know. It makes me sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I've been talking with a lot of uh, different bands and gotten very different answers. From like your point of view, uh, how do you think this uh, pandemic will affect music industry? Uh, just immensely i think especially for bands our level if i'm going to be honest i think bands our level that are just sort of really still trying to get over that hurdle into um sort of the career world with it um it's it's going to be never ending there's no way you can socially distance a 500 to a thousand cap venue you just can't do it so i think for stadium headline acts i think it's going to be fine um but i think for bands are level and below and the sort of diy circuit that i've grown up on venues venues are closing down around the country i think it's going to be a shit show and to be perfectly honest i can't see shows happening the start of next year at all so i think it's a scary time i think you know at the same time we've got to be optimistic we've got to do what we can do um i like the inclusion of sort of online shows that's really exciting that's cool um yeah, but it is what it is. There's no, there's no denying the fact that bands at our level are going to suffer immensely because of it. Uh, yeah, you said that uh, you have already started, kind of maybe starting uh, writing new stuff already for the fourth album. So, do you think this time will affect that music and how? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm trying not to write too much about what's going on because I think it could come quite cheesy. Um, and I think the best way to write is to reflect after it's happened. So the stuff that I'm sort of writing about at the moment is more general. It's more how I was feeling last year. It's more, you know, it's varied, but absolutely we're writing for the fourth record. I think the moment you take your finger off the pulse in this industry, especially to be completely honest with you, this record is the third record from a free album deal. So as far as anyone else is concerned, once this record is done, we're dead in terms of like an industry standpoint. So unless we get ahead of the curve and have a new record ready to go, no one gives a fuck. So it's, it's, it's really important for us to, to continue writing, but also because of the new lineup and stuff, it's, it's, it feels natural, like the, you know, the juices are flowing. It's incredibly exciting. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm super excited about this record, but the whole point of this band is we said it from the moment we had a practice together. It's not necessarily about this record. It's about where we can go on the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. It's, it, it's the excitement behind the music we can sort of make in the future. So we're starting to see that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, we live in a pretty uncertain times at the moment. And like you said, you can't like tour on the album. So what will be the very next things that you will do after you will do after the release of this album? Uh, like I said, I think we'll definitely do some online shows. Um, I hope we can do some like really small socially distant shows, some intimate ones. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't know. I, I've got no idea. I don't think anyone has any idea right now. So. Yeah, what are your thoughts on those like streaming gigs? Do you have already an idea how you want to do it? I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd fucking love to do it like Biffy Clary did it with a stadium and a lighting rig and stuff, but that isn't going to happen. So I think we do have some ideas. With it. So I've recently moved to Scotland uh, with the drummer Finn 
and um, our little rehearsal space, there's a guy that owns a studio there and it's all to tape, his studio. So I think we, we might try and do something in this, uh, in a live setting there, just in a room all to tape, which would be really cool. I don't think anyone's done that yet. So maybe we'll do something like that. Just pay, because of the climate, like we're not gonna charge people anything, but just pay what you want. Just give us a quid.